Hi guys! Welcome to my crazy life. It's Lori and here is my wee little haul. I just got back from New Jersey. I went for the Buckeye game. So we're going with easy food this week for lunches. I did make some extra last week, but I picked up one of these. And if you do keto, these are like a lifesaver. They are mozzarella cheese with hard salami, prosciutto, and pepperoni. And they're individually packaged. So if I take a couple of, of these, like three or four, and two hard-boiled eggs, that's breakfast for me. So I'm going to boil some eggs and have these for breakfast. I'm defrosting a steak, and I'm going to cook that, slice it up, and make some sandwiches with a um, chaffle, a cheesy waffle. I'll show you again how I make those and put the sandwich together. But that is thaw, frozen solid, so I need that to thaw. So it might not be today's meal. Um, I have some Brussels sprouts, and I want to do something yummy with those. I don't know what. <laughs> some Parmesan cheese and pork rinds. And right now, butter is on sale for $1.99. So I've been buying it, and I'll throw some in my freezer. And then I got some cranberries. I'm going to try to make a little bit of cranberry sauce, some keto cranberry sauce. So I think it'll be like cranberries, a little um, sweetener, probably my Lakanto, and some water. That's the recipe to make it if you're using real sugar, but I will be using less than that. And I probably will not cook up all of them, but maybe because then I could freeze it. So this was like $20. I'm hoping my steak thaws here before too long. And I'll just leave it on the counter and cook that up. And then we'll make some chaffles. Huh, now I need to go get comfortable. All right, I got the steak in. What I ended up doing is a reverse cook. It was not going to be thawed in time. So I put it in the crock pot on high for a couple hours. It thawed it. It kind of cooked it from the inside. Um, it's not done by any stretch of the imagination. But it's thawed. Um, what I'm doing is just browning it in a pan. And this is a New York strip. And it's a pretty hefty one. So I'm just browning it in a pan. And I'll flip it and brown it all the way around. And then I'll throw it on top of here and finish it in the oven. So that is how we're going to cook this steak. It'll be fine. I'll slice it like a steak. Now, let me adjust you here for a second. What we're making in here is Brussels sprout slaw. Now, so you can see what I'm doing. I've taken the lid off. I have a container that you grate into and it goes into its own bowl but for so you can see I'm just oh, that one's up to temp I am just grating Brussels sprouts I'm not cleaning them I'm not taking off the green I'm just grating a package of Brussels sprouts and I'm going to make coleslaw out of Brussels sprouts I just think it gives a, a really good flavor and really, Brussels sprouts are just little cabbages. So that's what I'm doing right now. And what you get is just like shredded cabbage. But it's Brussels sprouts. So I'm doing that. I'm cooking the steak here in a little bit of avocado oil. Because it's higher temperature. So I'm going to brown that on all sides. I'm going to do this. And then I'll bring you back when I'm ready to make some chuffles and show you how I make the coleslaw. All right, while well, the steak is finishing up and I don't need to put it in the oven, that's the beauty of this process. I thought I would, but it feels pretty done to me. So what I'm getting ready to do is just move it over here. Put that in the sink and let it cool. And I'm gonna wrap this up just in some foil and let it also rest. You want to let your meat rest to allow it time to for the juices to flow back in. So I have a whole bag of Brussels sprouts. I'm going to take some mayonnaise, guys. I don't measure. I just need, you know, mayonnaise. I'll show you how much. 
for this amount. Maybe a quarter of a cup. I don't need a lot. I use Dijon mustard in my um, coleslaw, but that's how what I like. I use a little red wine or apple cider vinegar, which I need to get some more. I need salt and pepper. I like a lot of pepper, remember? Some salt. And then one packet of my sweetener. Just to give it instead of sugar. Take a fork. Now if you don't have vinegar, you could use any type of acid. Like a lemon juice would be good. The mustard is good acid too. But I like my coleslaw more acidic than I do sweet. And then I'm just mixing this all together. I won't taste it. Mmm, that's good. But it needs a little more vinegar and a little more mustard. But this is going to be to your taste, guys. But this is my basic recipe. Um, because I like a more bitter, like a, that acidity, the acid from the vinegar. So yeah, that's it. And then what we're going to do, I'm going to taste it again just to make sure. It has a nice bite to it. You want to do this tonight before you start eating it because you um, it'll draw out some of the liquid from the cabbage and make it a little more coleslaw-like. Um, the you know the Brussels sprouts have liquid in them, and then if this isn't enough, which it should be, I can you know make some more. But um, I like mine again a little dry. If you like more mayonnaise on yours. Certainly you can add more, but I, this is how I like mine. Pretty dry because the salt and the pepper in here is going to, it's going to draw out the liquid in the uh, Brussels sprouts or cabbage if you're using cabbage. And it, so tomorrow when I go to pack my lunch, there'll be more liquid at the bottom and I'll stir it up and it'll be thinner. So for tonight, that's how it looks. It's just, you know, you want to blend it together. Again, I like mine a little more dry. And here's the fun thing. Tomorrow, if it's too dry, I can add more dressing. But I'm not packing this in my lunch tonight because I need it to kind of sit. So I'm going to put these ingredients away and I'm going to get out the stuff to make the chaffles. And I'll show you one how I make them. All right. I've got my waffle maker out. It's warming up. This is two whole eggs and a cup of cheddar cheese. That is it for the chaffle. Now, you can add flavoring to it. You can add anything you want. Some people make them sweet with like a mozzarella cheese. This is my base mess recipe if I want to make like a bread type thing. Like a waffle for a sandwich, which I'm going to make. Now, I only need a couple days worth. I do have some stuff in the freezer. Um, and I don't know how many steak sandwiches this will make. But what you do and you know you got to kind of give yourself a little bit of leeway with the cheese and the egg it honestly depends on how big your egg is and how much you know liquid you want how eggy I suppose you want this so I just added a little more cheese I like mine a little thick I'm gonna just whip it up like that and that is that's it. Now I take a spoon, oops, sorry, a spoon about that size, drop it in the middle, and a second. The goal here is not to overfill it. Because if you overfill it, you end up with a mess. So there, I have it flooded at the bottom. And then I just put the lid on it and let it go. It'll take about five minutes to cook this chaffle. And then I'll show you when it comes out. You know, need more light. What it looks like. All right. I'm doing these a little softer to be more like a white bread. Um, so you really want to watch them. They're not taking five minutes. They're just taking a couple. And I decided since I'm working at my part-time job as well, I'll make 
you know, maybe a little more. So I made one more batch of the, ooh, I'm always sweeping this floor tonight. One more batch of the chaffle mix. I like to do it two eggs and a cup of cheese at a time. And again, you just mix it together. I had one that overflowed on me a bit. But I am super tired. I, Like I said earlier, I just got back from New Jersey. Um, seeing the Patriot, no. I'm watching the Patriots on TV. <laughs> um, Patriots and the Eagles are on tonight. So the next thing I'm going to do, I'm going to cook up all these chaffles. This one's a little crunchier, but it's still not like hard. And these, you got to let them cool completely. And then I'm going to cut the steak and make sandwiches and wrap them up for lunches and dinners this week. I'm just going super easy. I've got eggs boiling. Back here, I'm going to peel them up, have hard-boiled eggs, cheese, and sausage for breakfast. And then dinner, oops, sorry, and then dinner is just going to be whatever. So I'm going to finish making up these, and then I will, I'm just going to slice the steak um, to make sandwiches. And then I'll show you how I build them. All right, guys, we are ready. I hope you can see what I'm doing here. First off, I made some horseradish mayonnaise. It's mayonnaise and horseradish. That's it. I like that. Um, again, I told you I like that tart, bitter taste. So I'm just filling up some of these little cups to take to work. Um, these are little Tupperware containers. Yeah, there we go. So I'm making those. I'll finish those up. I sliced up some radish to have on it as well because, again, I like that peppery bite. Now, all I'm going to do sandwich-wise, I have some zip bags. I'm going to open them up. I have enough to do four. So we've got to open them all up. So you don't make a mess and these are my Dollar Tree Christmas ones because yeah I love Christmas okay now we need four sandwiches I won't put cheese on these because the bread is made with cheese and then I'm just taking some of this meat Right, and I'm gonna make a sandwich. This steak turned out perfect. Medium rare, which is how I like it. Um, and again, what I did is I stuck it in the crock pot on high for about four hours, not even, two hours. And once it was thawed and partially cooked, I then took it and put it in the pan and seared it. That's it. It's like a reverse cook. So you're cooking the meat and then um, searing it up. Whatever meat is left, I will probably have for dinner this week, or it may end up in the freezer if I decide that I don't need to. Now, I'm not doing anything else to these sandwiches, but putting the meat on them. I need a little extra. And then I'm going to put them in a zip bag and put them in the refrigerator. And again, if I don't end up eating them all, I can freeze them. Um, I won't do them airtight if I'm just going to have them like this week or next. And then when I pack my lunch in the morning, I'll bring a mayonnaise, the sandwich. I'll bring some coleslaw. And then for breakfast, I have eggs back here cooking. I'm getting ready to put them on ice to peel them. And I'll have two hard-boiled eggs and some salami and meat and then tomorrow night for dinner I will take some cheese and meat for my dinner because I'm working at my part-time job and there's really nothing there I can eat I'll probably bring meat cheese maybe some radish things like that just to have for dinner it's gonna be a late game um, 
I don't even have to be at work until 620, which means we're looking at like a 730 tip off for basketball. So it'll be a late night, but I don't have to be at work until 1030 on Tuesday because of um, it's my late night there. All right, so that is everything. These items will, oh, I gotta find the right lid for these containers. I'll fill up all my mayonnaises and have them set. And that is my lunch for next week. I hope that was helpful to you guys and that you enjoyed. Check out my other videos, like, share, subscribe, and have a good one. Bye.